Hi, welcome to Bead Elegance. I'm Diane, and I'm going to teach you how to create a beaded piece of jewelry today using crimp beads and stringing wire. It is considered one of the basic techniques in the beaded jewelry industry. Today we're going to use a, what's called a crimping tool. It has some very specific holes, and I'll explain what those mean in just a wee bit. The other tool we're going to need today is a flush cutter, and we require a flush cutter because you're going to use that sharp edge on the outside there to get really deep inside right next to your crimp bead in order to cut the excess wire off. The stringing material I like to use is an Aculon. It's a seven strand. It's plastic coated uh, intertwined steel. It's real hard to break. Usually the break point would be at the crimp bead. That's why we're going to learn how to do a really good crimp bead today. The crimp beads I use, these are a two by two tube. It's a sterling silver. The only thing I will use is a sterling silver crimp bead. And the reason for that is whenever you try to save money by buying the base metal crimp beads, that base metal has a lot more carbon in it and it's going to cause it to crack and break. A lot of frustration for new beginners. I have chosen a rather pretty little pewter clasp. It's a toggle clasp, and I'll explain that in a moment also. I've already cut my wire, and I have got my beads ready to be strung. I have also chosen a real pretty lampwork bead. It has purple and oranges in it that I have then pulled to add a resin bead, an orange resin bead. So what I'm doing is I'm pulling from this the colors that I can now mix together and enhance the orange. It's going to be real lovely when I'm done with it. I also have some real pretty uh, end caps or bead caps that are going to hold and sit real nicely in between the beads. At this point in time, I'm going to kind of tuck the end of my wire, I've already cut my wire, into to the length, a decent length that I'm comfortable with. I'm going to tuck that piece of wire into my little pinky here to hold on to it. Many, many times beaders have actually dropped the end of the beads, the open end of the wire, and they have gone everywhere. So we all chuckle, we pick them up, and we all pat each other on the back and say, welcome to the club. So now I'm going to add my pretty beads together in a very simple but elegant pattern, um, and I'm going to make a bracelet. I just think that's going to be the easiest to demonstrate with. And these pewter beads are absolutely lovely to put in together. I now put the beads all assembled the way I want them on the wire. At this point in time, I have checked to make sure that it's going to fit well on my wrist, not too long, not too short. And at this point in time, I'm going to add a crimp bead to the one side, leaving the rest loose this way. So here is my crimp bead. I am going to add the toggle or one half of the toggle, should I say. We're going to capture the toggle by creating a loop with the crimp bead. And we're going to pull all as much excess as possible out of there, out of the space between the toggle and the crimp bead. Now remember I said there were two holes in the crimp tool. What we are going to do is we are going to start by placing our crimp bead into the hole closest to the joint. That is going to create what I call a half moon in our crimp bead. Now you want to make sure that this fills the cavity proper, properly, not too far one side or the other or cockeyed because it will ruin your crimp bead. Okay, now I'm going to stand it up in the crimp bead, or in the, in the crimping tool. I'm going to stand that up on its end, and I'm going to fold that like a book. That, when you can see it, and it looks like a book, that is proper technique for a crimp bead. Then I'm able to take my flush tool, slide it in, underneath the excess wire and cut that off. And we are able to slide that down and now you have one half of your bracelet complete. 
Before I do anything else with the other side, I'm going to add what we call a crimp cover. And these are kind of new to our studio here. What these do is they cover the crimp bead and any excess material that might be sticking out, and it actually protects the skin. It's been kind of nice. We are learning to work with them and enjoying them a lot. I'll show you better on the next, the next go around with this one. Okay, so there is one half of your bracelet. Now we're going to always, always, and this is something I teach everybody, please lift your beads up. Make sure that there's no gaps within because there's nothing more aggravating than to finish a necklace or a bracelet only to pick it up to find that you did not pull your beads in, they did not settle down, and there's a gap in there. It's pretty ugly, and usually you need to redo your whole bracelet or necklace. Now we're going to add the crimp bead to the other side. This time, we are going to bring it all the way down to the beads. We are going to add our other part to the toggle. Bringing this forward, we are now going to capture the toggle via a loop and push our excess wire back through the crimp bead. So literally, we have a loop happening here. I like to work this to where I bring my crimp bead as close to my beads as possible. You will need a slight millimeter or two just for flexibility in between the, the crimp bead and the beads, but you are going to need to pull this in as much as possible, as close as possible. Now that to me is too much gap, so I'm going to continue to work that. A lot of people don't realize that's where a really nice job can happen or a really nasty job if you just you don't work it well enough. I am pleased with what I have right now. This is going to work out real well. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start again. We're going to put the crimp bead into the first slot towards the, uh, the bolt or the nut in the center. And I'm going to make that half moon. Then I'm going to roll it again, turning it on its end, and we're going to make a book out of that crimp bead. And that's perfect. I'm going to cut off the excess wire. And then again, I want to put a crimp cover over that bead, over that crimp bead. Now I have used another use for my crimping tool. I have placed this crimp bead or crimp cover inside my crimping tool. It's a wonderful little device for you know all kinds of different things. And then I'm going to place that crimp bead inside the, the groove, gently pressing that closed, and voila, there's my crimp cover. Perfect. And you might want to fuss with it a little bit, and there you go. That is simply gorgeous.